and at stake in this series is a spot in our winner's bracket final, a guaranteed top three finish, uh, and a big juicy piece of that $300,000 prize pool. We've been emphasizing a lot of teams treating this as kind of a warm-up for TI, but it's a pretty good payday at stake here, guys. So we're going to see, uh, I'd imagine the opening bands probably much the same as we saw in the last game. Yeah, don't think we'll see too much change though. DC, like especially. Again, it's yeah. Seeker with first pick again, which is kind of interesting. Perhaps DC recognizing they want to take away that dire side from Seeker. It feels plays to me like around we've Roche. seen that a lot in this tournament. We've seen a lot of teams say, yeah, you know, we'll, we'll go ahead and take that first pick dire, second or second pick radiant, whatever yeah. we played in the first game. I would actually like to see them not be in Dark Seer. Maybe pick it early or for Bulba. I think that would be pretty decent. And the Ogre. And they banned the Ogre this time, yeah. Wow. The, ban, really? the Ogre ban. I think it's just... Dang. I think they just don't want to ban the Darks here and stuff. Like They just want to leave their option, yeah. every option open in there, in the pool. Could have maybe banned a Mirana, which is something which yeah. DC is full. I'd rather like to see a Mirana ban, because that's, to me, being much more key DC hero. But at the same time, maybe Secret's thinking they could play Mirana. Yeah, yeah definitely. Okay, and DC are going to go ahead and take yeah. it away the Drow. Yeah, I can't argue with that. So, I think it's the other reason DC maybe choose Dire of a first Shadow pick. Demon, first yeah. pick Shadow Same thing, once still. Again. Yeah. Because there's, there's no one hero that if you give Seeker when they're first picked, like, it's like, oh man, we got to verse this hero. But E.T. Drow to me are those two, I like, mean, clear tier one picks. Don't you, don't you just open Void Morana again? Well, they did, they did Void Ogre last time. But yeah, yeah but, but but they picked Morana third, and, yep. and it kind of... I, I thought that those, those were more or less interchangeable. I might even say Void Lion might be okay. better for them because they already have the shadow demon and they're likely to pick like a morphling or something uh illusion based to deal with it so i think that they they could go back for an illusion and ban the line in the second phase and they might have a harder time dealing with that in late game yeah. there's also of course the beast master on the table which oh. oh wow all right that's not what i expected totally new direction he's also good at dealing with illusions i mean he's definitely a hero that, that has shown that he has sort of first phase potential but Still, still plenty of counters in the pool. It's mostly a Mu hero, though. I know Wii's played it, but that's like what Ben was talking about, them like drifting yeah. a little bit too far from their yeah. style, like Wii has comfort. Op opinions are, and there's the line that's that you really called for. Though. Yeah. I really uh, like that, though. Like the, it's kind of like, I feel like we're going to see the rise of Lion come back just because of Shadow Demon and all yeah. these illusion things. Agreed. Uh, there's, there's, opinions are wow. deeply divided on Wii's Timbersaw. Uh, but yeah, there is the Ursa that you guys called for, and I, I completely agree. Uh, our tour played that very, very well last night in the series against complexity yeah clever versus the timber saw too obviously you can't yeah. really get burst down they're bursted down within rage you have heavy physical burst for him without really worrying too much about yeah. reactive armor all of a sudden the stacks don't matter i actually really like um we've talked about this uh the potential of putting ursa against timber saw mid if that's the direction that dc yeah. choose to go All right, so looking at looking at second phase ban here for digital cast, the the Marana is Mirana still in the pool. I imagine that yeah, yeah, I imagine it's, that one of the two teams takes that out. That's it. It could be either team banning it really, because I think RTZ plays it as does we. So I don't think DC wants to like have to ban many illusion heroes. Their first two picks are pretty much to counter that, but maybe they feel forced anyway. I just don't think they have a good solution like SD Marana. Yeah, that's a yeah. very annoying combo that you like just don't want to give free kills to, and it's very easy to I think throughout the game. Marana, I mean, against Timbersaw, there's a lot of magic damage there, so it's kind mm -hmm. of a natural fit as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's who is the first pick coming out? It's gonna be. So it'll be DC, DC had first pick. So if they would leave Marana. Right, no, 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 no. DC had second pick, so they have to pick first. Yeah, the so they have first pick yeah. coming, oh, coming out. out. Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. I was confusing with that. So DC may leave Mirana because they can pick it before it's secret too, but... Hmm? I, I really do like the Dark Seer band though. I, I actually did think yeah. that secret we're gonna we're gonna open with that. I, I I thought they would also. I didn't think that they would grab the Ursa, but... Dark Seer Ursa would be pretty scary if it was still in the pool. Okay, they banned the Mirana. Mirana. Yeah. Yep. Makes sense. Hmm. So do you target Bulb again? I... Yeah, I think you. I think you take out Beastmaster here too. Beastmaster or Tide, yeah. I hmm. guess with what you've got, I still. Yeah, I, I still a little. I still would rather give Bulb Tide than Beastmaster. They're both. Maybe you don't even want to. 
thing is that both of those are very good. Yeah. Honestly, yeah. like they're both they both fit the lineup, fit everything that they kind of want. Oh, yeah. It's just the it's just the vision. Yeah. I, I'd the vision the vision game is the yeah. big one. And when you're a dire team who's exactly. gonna not necessarily prioritize Roche, but at least want to be able to secure it at some point in the game. And we did say it's you know Beastmaster's Bulba's best hero in our opinion. Yeah. So. What carries do you guys think you want to run against Ursa? There. What kind of resolution heroes? Don't think Stark's bad here. I mean, I don't yeah. Think, yeah, I don't think Stark's bad. Just something, all. something mobile. I think Invoker maybe I would have looked to ban out. I think he's like pretty good at kiting Ursa, constantly. A lot of AOE damage versus the illusions too. Super annoying. Hmm. Huh. So they're taking their time here. We got nothing flown. Void is still in the <laughs> Void still in the pool though. And yeah, Void Void's... a very good pick for DC in the second phase. That's actually a good point. And then it then it's gonna be position one void though. Position right? one void or then. a, a mid timber, timber and move, move void. I I don't think that we want to see a <laughs> yeah. mid mid timber honestly for DC against a potential air. Situation. I don't know though. I'm I'm kind of of two minds about that. I, I, I there's no reason to me that we couldn't get very very good with the hero. It just. I, it's just something. Uh, I, I don't know. I, yeah, it, like it, it seems like watching the replays that there's definitely kind of a block well, there. If but... DC want to be first picking, they have to have the flexibility because I don't think right. you yeah, can exactly. be first That's picking what I'm and running exactly. it. Exactly. The hero yeah, needs. Definitely. It's a hero that doesn't function without farming levels, so you can't right. just be like saying, "Oh, we're going to run Mood Timber every game," because there's going to be games where he gets nothing. Out of yeah, your absolutely. Ooh. Just like we're kind of just saying that, like Weeha's Timber is just, and at least in the American qualifiers and stuff, he just looked very yeah. under practice yeah. on it. Have they ever run it safe lane for Rezo? I don't think I've seen that at all. I don't believe. I think uh, Moose. I think Moos played it in the safe lane, and they pick Rezo yeah, or something right. like to just. If they get the right one v one matchup. Yeah. But actually, it's, I remember it's it's secret here that could also go back for the Sand King and try and get that one v one matchup that we've seen today. Yes, Navi being the ones who bring that to the rise. Yep. Yep. No, I think the only um, I've seen I've seen Ice 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 play some safe lane timber. I haven't seen much safe lane timber lately. Yeah, Dendi played it. Earlier today. Yeah, yeah, that's true. So DC will have to decide on kind of what direction they want to go with the timber, or just pick up and potentially another support here if they want to kind of keep it hidden. Oh, shaker. Okay. Earth shaker. Okay. Very, I mean, generic pick. More, nice, and more nice, likely a support too. I'd more say. More likely a support, but a uh, a nice pick there. I've seen both Soxa and, uh, Soxa and Mu play it. So you're not not giving away too much. I was looking at like there wasn't like an obvious misery hero with Ogre Ricky out of the pool. The bounty just seems a bit weak nowadays. And yeah, yeah, I think I like you, the you, can, you can easily shift the line over to the over to the five and run socks on there, Shaker. I don't think. You... And that's what it was kind of yeah. last game. And it's. It's more like you will have one that's roaming and one that's kind of zoning the offline. Now, sometimes the five actually gets more farm because you have stacks and pulls. Like exactly. your shadow demon sometimes end up more farm than an earth spirit, for example. But it's more about the the play style here, where misery likes to be more active, moving around the map. Hmm. I like to see more team fights. Such AOE come out from secret. Thing? Like they always have like a lot of uh, single target. All right, so there's damage. your bulba here. Yeah, that's the big change up. We've, I think we've only really seen him play the Dark Sea of the Tide on this this new version. Does not feel like an easy back game to me though. You've, you've got yeah. in the between the line and the Earthshaker, there's a lot that Bat has to worry about. Does the Insta disable? Like... But there's not like the the save. Uh, there's oh no... man! We were talking about the Weeha Lina, right? Yeah, there's a there is a blast from the past. I I, I think this hero is. Is a bit underrated currently. I still is think it, Lena has a lot of potential. I think Lena's potential, but like, is it, it actually better than in up Invoker pick? <laughs> to me, it's like why why yeah. pick Lena from mid when you could pick Wii Invoker? He's better. I'd say he's better on the hero, and I think it's just a better hero in general. Well, I think the yeah. I think the Lena, if indeed they're they're thinking about potentially putting an Ursa mid, I think the Lena punishes that uh, with the, early on a lot better than Invoker. Yeah, does. with the a roaming with Earth the Shaker. Shaker. Right, yeah, yeah, exactly. You have more kill potential in the first five minutes. But I, outside of that mid late game, I think Invoker is better in almost every other way. But we saw last game DC got a lot from winning the early game, so they're yep. perhaps kind of looking to do the same thing here. And no, I seriously doubt it. There's still there's, there's still that crazy core shaker on yeah. the table. What a change up though from what we've been seeing, at least like from the last week. Both these drafts look. I mean, there's a few similar heroes, but overall the themes of the draft are very different. Yeah. 
Yeah, and I, I, and I expect, I, I really do feel like the meta has quite a lot of shifting <laughs> like for TI, yeah, as we said. Okay. Well, I, like, and uh, here's your solution, by the way, to what we were worrying about with, oh gosh, what is Bat going to do when you got to worry about the Hex from the Lion, the Fisher from the Shaker, now the Stun from the Lena when he jumps oh. in, all of a sudden a repelled Bat Rider. Oops. Jeez, a repelled Ursa versus those four heroes. Ursa, yeah. No, th it's all spells. Yeah. Every single one that I'm going to pick, that repel is going to do so much you work in this game. You have to pick a fifth big defusal hero. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I don't see any other way around it. <sighs> Juggernaut, I guess, maybe one of the better options, but wh whatever it is, it needs to be a defusal hero. We got Juggernaut PL, I think. Yeah. I mean, there's enough defusal heroes out there. I don't think DC had totally dropped into a corner. That's a really just, good ban, by yeah. the way. Uh, oh, with so much magic. Oh, Timur has some pure damage. But yeah, yeah, but still. I think it would be a really good pick here. Pi used to play the Omni for the most part for these guys, yeah. right? So I guess maybe we'll see being the puppy uh, Omni Knight and the Pi just constant Shadow Demon. Huh. It's a really clever lane, though. The Bat Rider Omni Knight dual lane is uh, extremely pressuring. Mm -hmm. So we're down That to... lane is obnoxious. That lane is so obnoxious, <laughs> <That> is. honestly. <laughs> so we're down to we're down to Envy's hero. Fifth here for Secret. Oh no! No, no, no. Envy plays the Ursa as well. I think you don't want to run the Ursa mid against the Shaker yeah. Lena roaming. Well, the roaming Shaker plus Lena mid. All right, just extremely strong short laner. Ursa Shadow Demon, those two heroes. Probably one of the most potent safe lanes. And now you've got a mid that can do well against Lena and also doesn't die to the roaming Shaker if played cautiously. Huh. So, Defusal Hero, what's it going to be? PL for me. PL for me. Yeah, I think is like the better, best one. Better than Jug? Uh, yeah. I think yeah, he doesn't, get, he doesn't just, get kited as hard. And it gives you a lot of instances of damage to break refraction. Shadow Demon versus PL, though, too. SD benefits a lot from those That's illusions. Yeah, but they only have single target. They have no way to clear it's true. the illusions. I yeah. I actually kind of like the secret draft, though. This is really clever. I, they're almost, in some cases, I'm worried that there might be like too many heroes to repel that you're going to want to repel in a fight. But I think the the Repelled Ursa or Repelled Bat creating chaos is just, that's a lot of potential. Hmm. All right, what do you think, Fogged? I'm a little worried just because they have no lockdown for the Timber Saw, so if he's able to get farm in the early game, they're going to have some trouble to kill him just to actually, like, grab him down after the, if the Bat Rider isn't to grab him, but uh, I do, I do still like Seeker's Draft. I, I like Omni Knight a lot. I like the Repelled Ursa versus the majority of DC's uh, heroes, so I'll go with Secret. Okay. I, I think I'm going to take Secret here, too. I think I'd like to see Game 3, so maybe I'm picking with my heart, but with that, I think we're going to lend it, we're going to throw it over to our casters. Gods and Merlini, take it away, guys. All right, game two, secret. Not that two minutes life line is the winner bracket, so they have another chance in the lower bracket. But what, what do you think? Is two two votes for Team Secret. Are you agreeing or? Mm, I actually go with DC this yeah. game because I think they struggle to make the Bulba puppy uh, tandem work, uh, at least from what I've seen before. And Omni Knight generally sounds good on paper, but he doesn't ha hasn't won very many games of competitive, and he always just seems to be as effective as he is on, on paper. I actually, I agree. I, I like the DC draft a little bit better. And just the way they're playing, I think they might win game two. But it's funny because Omni Knight, highest like pub win rate, at, even at high MMR levels, but doesn't do well in competitive. Like, to expand on that, like what, what do you think makes the hero not work in competitive? People draft a lot better around uh, against it. I think they also like, they're much better at buying and using the defusals mm -hmm. versus it. I'm not completely sure about why he has such a ridiculous uh, win rate? Maybe like the people who play Omni Knight like really know how to play Omni Knight, as opposed to, like you know people just pick whatever else. I don't know. It's kind of like Chen. Chen, I would expect to hopefully have a high win high rate win just rate because like if you pick Chen, you probably know how to play. It. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, here we go. Game number two. Starting to unravel. Looks like it will be the Moo Timbersaw in the off lane. Shadow Demon Ursa. Lack of kind of lock. They've got the setup, but there's no follow up for the disruption to find kills there. But you can zone a Timbersaw using your passive as Ursa. And it looks like we'll see Puppy at least initially spending some time in the offlane again. I mean, I have nightmares about Eternal Envy's Ursa uh, after seeing what, what he, how he played it at Shanghai. That was when Ursa was like first picked by Liquid and they destroyed like everyone. Uh, and then I think Secret tried to steal Ursa from them and then they put it on Envy and Envy just looked like he had never played the hero Envy before. Envy should have nightmares about Ursa. He lost a, a 1v1 to yours truly with Ursa. <laughs> he still owes me a McDonald's McMuffin because of that. <laughs> Yet to repay me, so that's like three years ago. So I hope he's uh, practiced it in the meantime. It's been yeah. a long time since I made her, so. 
Hopefully, yeah, uh, it's it's a lot better than before. He used to, he used to play the hero like that was he he played it mid because he used to grind it in pub games. Like he went for this max earth shock mid Ursa build all the time where he'd bottle rush and just spam his earth shock mid. But obviously, this isn't the mid Ursa. This is a, a hero. I mean, he definitely likes hero because of how much he's played it, but. We'll have to adjust his playstyle a bit here. Going for the Orb of Venom. We'll be prioritizing zoning Moo out here. As far as... Uh, Moo? Oh, he has level got one Chain, yeah. Shadow he was... Poison does a lot of damage. He actually goes into Envy, who has that Orb of Venom here. This is going to be a kill, it looks like, potentially. Yep. Shadow Demon, one more poison. Gets the kill. That was weird. Misplays kind of Moose Timbersaw there. Really good job by Secret getting him at level one. And we'll see a timber chain back from Mu as he comes back to the lane. I mean, I guess with the shadow poison, this lane actually does pretty well to, to zone the timber saw. After you already get one kill on him, I mean, yeah. <laughs> it's pretty good. All right. I'll have to fall back a bit here. He's kind of just waiting for Shadow Demon to run out of mana potentially. So. For Puppy in the off lane, this is, I, to me, one of Omni's biggest weaknesses. How and where do you lane the hero? With the Omni bat lane, that lane is surprisingly strong, though. It yeah. you, was popular at some point in competitive, but never really flourished to, you know, the, being like top tier, I think. Actually, getting level one degen in the lane, which Puppy doesn't actually have, is very annoying. The You have like Oof Slow plus one level of degen plus napalm and heroes move at like 40 percent move speed and like you just repel the bat rider and he just runs over you with napalm uh, but versus resolution on the pl it's very difficult to actually uh, do damage to him under napalm stacks and double stuns is very good versus a very early level in repel I mean, double stun to double stun dc looking to do what damage they can against this dual lane and again it's dc with the tri lane Recognizing that secret are gonna try and pressure and take advantage of the DC safe lane and not having any of it You've got a PL a hero that's very farm dependent You know secret like to do these dual lanes in the off lane Just secure that safe lane above ever, ever anything and then later on you can have misery perhaps rotating around When I think of uh, secret though, I never really think of them with a uh, puppy as a dual lane off laner like he's normally the greedy jungler or yeah. uh even when he like plays Dazzle, I think he pulls a lot in the safe lane. Yeah. Uh, I guess I, I've seen him pressure to offlane sometimes with like a Tide plus Dazzle, but I think it's mostly few and far between. So, I'm... Boba doesn't have mana for lane. a Firefly. He may go down here. Hex as well, he's close. 96 mana, he goes for the Fairy Fire. Now the Repel will come out. And with that, there's not going to be a Phantom Lance. He finally gets mana for Firefly. That Repel will wear off and Resolution throws a Lance out. Is there another Fissure soon? Misery has it in a second. Hits it on Bulba with the Creeps in the right click. They get the kill. Nicely played there from DC. Bulba just not managing his mana as he didn't have the Firefly away. And he burned two Fairy Fires right there. That's a, that's a lot to give up. Okay, so... Early game lanes, we see the CS for the two main cores of Secret looking good. Lina getting completely wrecked in this mid lane. Arteezy thinks about committing, but thinks twice as we misses the stun. We saw this matchup a lot uh, during TI fights, and it's very difficult for the Lina to, to win this lane. Good fissure. Is that enough to get We the Rune? It will be. Blocking Puppy off. Moose come back in, just trying to get some XP here. Envy's going to be very careful. Both Envy and Pylai die low on HP, and Moo going to chain himself forward. Still has plenty of mana to play around, as well as a Mango, so it looks like the bottom lane has stabilized for Timbersaw. Only has two CS, but that should change soon for the better. I've seen a lot of uh, Timbers go for, like, the 0-1-2 with no points of Whirling Death. I think the Whirling Death is, like, almost imperative if you want to throw, like, any sort of pressure. You have, like, no kill potential with just Whirling Death, and... Uh, even if, once you get your shotgun, it's still very low. So I'm glad that he picked up the one point in death. So next move is going to be defensive scans used to see if there's any rotations coming out from DC. Particularly the Earthshaker here, that's going to be missing from the map. And it looks like Misery is making his next move towards this mid lane slowly. Whether or not that's going to be trying to find a kill. With Lena's level 6, this is kind of the timing to make that rotation mid with a fissure. But he has picked up another raindrops, so that's yeah. like I guess fissure it, plus Laguna, I would say. Depending how fast you... What's the, the cooldown raindrops? Four seconds. I guess you can combo before the... It depends if the refraction's up. If the refraction's up, you need to burn that before you throw your spells. 
Well, but Misery already sitting there. We'll pop the smoke, and Pilot Eye knows that there's someone there. Well, then. Can't go over oh, the fish. are going to buy time for the TP. Just barely. Bulba wow. didn't have Flame Break, of course, and Pilot Eye couldn't get in range for disruption. That was amazing positioning by DC, reading that there were going to be four heroes there, or at, at least three, yeah. but. Lena didn't actually need to TP, could have just ran with the Fissure perhaps, but gets away. Yeah, that w I think that they would have been chased down with Napalm and uh, okay. Repel. So I like I think sometimes you would expect the Batrider to be jungling, especially because he already died once in lane, but I think it was that was some next level stuff by DC, by Misery in particular, reading that. To the top lane, we've got PL, free farming away, matching up the Earth on CS, but the big standout is this mid lane, 38 CS on TA against the 18 CS of Lena. I mean, it can try and salvage things with some kills off the Laguna Blade, but... I think the worst thing that you're afraid of, if you're a DC, is the TA, like, actually killing the Lena and then snowballing off more and more kills yep. on the Lena. So, it hasn't really gotten to that point yet, and... Moo... The chain away just barely gets the range, but the Shadow Poison will be enough, and... Envy committing the ultimate for that one. Doesn't cost him any mana, so you may as well. DC have made a similar move towards the top lane, looking for Bulba, the Fissure to start things off. The Impale to follow has got the Firefly, but the damage output is going to be there as Bulba gets caught out in this top lane. And similar story to last game with Bulba. Gets the initial support from Puppy, but the DC trialing still shut him down, and we're not looking at a well-timed Blink Dagger for now, although Batrider does have better comeback mechanics than Aslada does as far as farming that. That gank was still a little bit sloppy by DC. They didn't get the Hex off before the Firefly. Yeah. And got... Uh, I don't know, maybe they like, baited out a stick charge, I guess. <laughs> not... Not the cleanest. So, another TP mid to refill the bottle, looks like, for RTZ. So, I think that's the second time he's gotten his uh, bottle filled up by his teammate. The mid lane is looking good for him. They've been doing a good job of protecting Arteezy, though. Yeah. Or protecting uh, Wii. I think, like, Arteezy has the potential to kill Lina, like, many instances in the first eight minutes, minutes of the game, but he still has not died yet. And it's kind of what you need to do in that matchup. And Mu, on the other hand, struggling a little bit, going for the 1 1 3. I think he actually died because he didn't have two points in Timber Chain. It yeah. looked like he, like, tried to walk around the uh, illusions and, and did not have enough range to just cast it immediately after the destruction. He's still at least getting levels and farm, has Chakram now, so... Doesn't feel like Moose being completely destroyed in this lane. Often you'll see offlaners when they're having a really tough time, they're still level 3 or 4 at 8 minutes in, but... He's doing just fine. It's also a double edged sword though, because he gave the his kill experience to Omni Knight, who I think like was one of the hardest parts about the hero yep. is like actually getting a lot of levels in the early game, because it's hard to get kills with them and it's hard to jungle. So here, TZ, pick up a gloves here, looking probably just for some first item treads. But he's got another smoke rotation coming his way. Pine needs to hit the disruption to start things off. The Dire Observer of Sentry combo going to be bypassed if Pi can get this disruption. And we maybe thinks he's safe here. Pi like I sees him, but it's going to be going from low ground to high ground. So they need some vision up there. And looks like we is ready for it. Four heroes missing, or yeah. three heroes missing again. and. DC read it well once again. And again, it's Bulba not farming up the jungle. When yeah, he's... it's very costly. I think uh, that actually tends to be Bulba's playstyle a little bit more too, is tending to fight his way back in the game instead of farm. So maybe a little bit pre predictable on his end if you're DC, but I, I still think those are like very difficult ganks to read. And props to DC for that. So they've got some Ancient stacked up here for the TA. It's going to be some farm. I mean, it feels like Arteezy Oh, this is going to be a game around Arteezy and Envy, and unlike last game, it's not like they need a ton of farm. You've got TA who can just go fight with Blink Deso, Ursa who just wants to get a Blink Dagger and fight as well. It's going to be a very different playstyle this game compared to last. Maybe not as easy though, because PL has a lot of farm. Dangerous time to fight into the Ursa with Repel, and Moo will pay the price. Rotations from Secret again, it's Bulba rotating in. Bulba seems to be there anytime there's a fight, which is perhaps a double-edged sword. Yeah. It's okay. He's level 6. He has like, what, maybe a thousand gold already, and RTZ working on his third set of Ancients. Resolution, is he going for Diffusal Rush? Yeah, yeah so no. that's... I'm going for the Treads over the, the Greedy at Travels option. We oh, completely caught out. Almost brings down Envy. The Fissure will get the kill. That's a lot of farm going Misery's way. He's suddenly like, oh sweet, got 1300 gold. Dang, that was a good turnaround by 
Alina, I thought he, he was just going to be dead without casting anything. Moose coming in, immediately timber chaining aggressively, thinking he can pressure Omni out of this lane. So they just need to buy a little bit more time until uh, they have the defusal on the on the PL. And Lion, he's not quite level 6 yet, trying to pick it up in the mid lane and kind of doing the bare bones build, the stick very necessary versus the Batrider, but still trying to make his way towards Blink Tech without dying. But they need. Uh, yeah, they need Diffuse on PL and Secret, they need the Blink Dagger on to the Batrider. Is he go he, he should be going for Blink Dagger in this game. I imagine yeah. so. He's seeing on 1000 gold, looks like he's going to prioritize. I think you can a actually bit. get away with a drums build, though. If you have a Omni Knight on your team, you can just run in with drums and napalm, and yeah. like, they're not going to have blinks that early, so it's actually not. It's also the fact, though, with the blink that it, it synergizes well with the other blinks on your team. Like, you blink in with the Ursa, like, you both blink in together, and the hero's instantly dead. So there is some good synergy between getting multiple blinks on the same team. But DC perhaps ready to fight soon around that defusal. But PL defuse is also very hard for TA to fight into. Mm hmm. You get that uh, illusion swarm onto you, and suddenly your entire mana pool's gone. Refraction gets burned very quickly. It's about time to get some kills and a Roshan. Three man smoke by Secret. Ah, yes. The, I mean, it's, you're on the Radiant side. Bolt. Misery, sorry. Can be the one running into it. Uh, can he spend his money? He's mostly depleted after buying the Arcane Boots and Raindrops. He's trying to get down the aggressive ward. I think recognizing that. Bulba on the bat is going to be looking to farm the jungle a lot, and also that you want to keep tabs of where Ursa is to stop that Roche from happening. So they're actually going for yet another kill. We oh, dodges the blink, but he's getting sandwiched. And he gets pummeled down Saksa in the wrong place at the wrong time as well. Easy follow-up kill for Secret, and it's a much faster paced tempo coming out from this team here in game number two. Immediately into the Roche pit they go. No mask of of death, but it should be a very straightforward rush regardless. They've got a double damage on OTZ. They've got heals from the Omni Knight. And Mu is not even coming to throw Chakrams into the pit. They are giving this one up for free. So I don't even know if they want to take a fight at this point, even though they do have the defusal, fighting into the Aegis, plus all this firepower. Yeah. And your Timbersaw is still like very weak. Your Lina is under farmed. There's Blink on T8 and Ursa now, so. And this is where Orlina can kind of struggle because here with no real defensive capabilities. What's is there any item or game plan as far as bringing the Lina into the overall DC game plan? Just stay in the back and not die. I think maybe Aether Lens. Yeah. Uh, so you can just stay stay at range. I think you need like the Timber and the PL up in front, and like later on, I think you can follow up after the Blink Daggers on the two supports if they can farm it at some point, but. It's looking pretty dicey, like RTZ is very far into TA and like there's just so much physical damage out from them. They need blink daggers on DC, they need armor, they need uh, ghost scepters, four staffs, like all, all these items and they're really struggling to get anyone up on the network chart aside from the Phantom Lancer. Puppy. Good senses there, finds a deep DC ward. So we'll see what Secret's move is going to be with Aegis and these double Blink Daggers. You've got to imagine they want to play aggressive here. I think it's triple Blink Daggers now. Batrider just f***ed up his and... Yeah, triple Blinks. You've got to defuse on DC, but it's still scary. Like, Ursa, if it, you get the Repel Purge off of you, you've still got the ultimate to protect you. You've got a double Blink to back you up as well. It's the fact you've got this backup now that means th they're not reliant on the Repel to fight. Like, these heroes, even without the Omni in the picture, can run over DC, so... Yeah, and if you jump Omni, you have uh, TA there, or sorry, you have the disruption to protect yeah. him too. So they can't really all in on the Omni Knight, which is generally how you want to deal with them. Just isolate him, kite the others, burst them down, and then finish the others. T1 tower mid uncontested, but just kind of a delay game for DC. Not fighting into the Aegis is probably a big part of it, and also just like you say, the Blink Daggers is one of the things they may have to wait for on two. First Shaker is very far away from it still. With this sort of game though, you probably regret going for Defusal first, even though it's good in theory versus the Omni Knight. Like, you want the Yasha and the Defusal if you're not going to fight, but he didn't really expect that his team was going to lose three heroes and then lose a Roche when he was warming up for his uh, Defusal Blade. So that's pretty unfortunate for resolution. Yeah. Well, won't slow him down too much. If anything, I mean, his net worth speaks for itself. He is farming up a storm here, but it's solo core PL kind of, and yeah. into Shadow Demon. I guess there's no AoE, there's no, no 
good AoE to deal with the illusions, but... But now he also can't go for back for a BOT build. Like, this yep. this particular game, it, again, it sounded like the Diffusal Blade was going to be great, but now that it's kind of evolved into a different sort of game where DC are just not looking to fight at all and split push the map, he he would want more items to accelerate his farm. Well, say goodbye to your Blink Dagger Dreams misery as he gets caught out again in the mid-tier two. Kurt will pull this up. Not a big gold lead. You can see here, mostly because of how well PL's been doing in farming, DC have kept this very close and competitive and resolution kind of in the position that Envy was in last game where it's like, okay, just got to split push. Can't really come to the fights right now. It's good that, that he's dodging the fights. I think if he were fighting with a Diffusal, they would get massacred. He took two towers incredibly fast, all things considered. Mm -hmm. Even Moose taking a tower bottom, so you can tell Secret they're the ones grouping up as five and DC are at least reacting well, but it's still uh, playing from a deficit. Lion also needs Blink Dagger. Yeah, he was much closer than the Shaker. He was actually kind of in range, yeah, 400, 500 gold away and so they see the Omni Knight TP and immediately smoke up, so Ooh. this is going to be a pretty good fight for them if they can get the jump before the Blink Dagger, but they're going to have to fit her first. Oh, Envy, sensing it coming his way. Oh, the ward there, actually. Was Urshaker wasn't smoked, was just the other one? He was, but he, oh, I think okay. it, it popped, popped as it, he yeah. was He was like slightly behind the tree. Yeah. Well, they're going to find Envy anyways. Goes for the TP out. The Fissure is there just in time. Envy now out of mana, so no defusal damage coming in, but... Another Spirit Land should be there soon. He blinks out after the disruption. Great play from Envy. And that's something Moo could have maybe stopped if he was in range for a Chakram, but DC did not have everyone in position. Don't think they'll have Sentry Wards ready for our TZ as well here. Uh, it's a Radiant Sentry, so... TZ thinking about a turnaround here, at least maintaining vision for his team. There'll be a TP out from Moo and... Soxa. Yeah. Resolution. He's not really thinking about saving Sax, I don't think. He's not even going to try and fight Arteezy. Sax guy will turn for an Impale, gets pushed back a little bit. Echo Slam from Misery doesn't do all too much here. So Arteezy with the Aegis, he doesn't have to be too worried about the PL for now. He's been kept alive thanks to the Omni Knight. Guardian Angel as well, protecting Bulba, but the Laguna will delete him. So it's a decent trade so far as Pilot Eye forced a TP out. Nothing to cancel it, so they'll go for Puppy instead. And don't think he'll be so fortunate. Can't really repel TP when there's a Diffusal there, as he'll get sandwiched and brought down good turnaround well secret were very desperate to get that kill because the lion they they can tell that he's like pretty close to his blink there he had only died once prior to that and like he his inventory is very barren so they they like maybe dove a little bit deeper than they should have but for for good reason yeah. and uh they wanted to make use of the ages as well but it expired just like as the fight was happening under the t1 so that was and nice. they were, I mean, it's easy to have his death, so he doesn't get that lion kill as fast as you'd like, making it a bit more difficult. Sox is also really quick with the hexes. He tried to, like, melt strike and then blink behind him immediately so that he could, like, dodge an impale or, or spike, but Sox was just like, nah, nope, <laughs> I'm hexing you. If he had just died right there without getting a hex off, and he, uh, that fight would have been way worse for DC. DC, smoke up off of this. Was someone on the trip? Possibly scanning out. It's gonna I hurt don't think it's enough, sure, yeah. It's really small. Yeah. Oh no, his oh, Blink baseball. Dagger dreams. This is the same thing that happened to Bulba last game. Yeah. Not, I mean, not in a core role, so perhaps not Radiant as important. has used Skin and has caught out the tail end of the smoke. They know exactly where DC are. Yeah, Dyer used Scan as well and will catch Bulba, but perhaps just catch the fact he's retreating here. And for DC, it's just like, okay, this smoke isn't going to work. Let's farm instead. But losing the line, the, the big blow there. will mean they have to play this kind of not they can't match secrets tempo so well without the lion blink that reliable initiator look at the net worth so it's still pl on par with the ta your lean is kind of doing not not matching the ta but at least matching the ursa and timbersaw is doing well so dc still in good fighting shape but this smoke from secret it's just a, if the support's at one more time i think like the the game is going to blow wide open yeah. Because, uh, like, Secret are kind of at the point where all they need to do is win one big fight and then they get next Roche and then the supports are in that range where, like, they're never going to be super useful on DC. Like, if you don't have Blink Daggers, four steps, go Scepters, you're just going to yeah. continuously feed versus this uh, Secret lineup. Yeah, that's where Secret are getting farm on their supports. They don't have to worry as much about their own lives, considering that Lena can't... Lena's not trying to get near the back lanes. Lena's staying as far away 
as possible and has to kind of prioritize those cores and as does PL with the diffusal. So Shadow Demon Omni Knight kind of free to just do whatever they want at the back of these fights. This is the fight. Hmm. Yeah, it looks like it should lead to at least a kill for Secret. Although at the same time, this pause kind of for DC, it's like, let's settle down. Like, you're looking at the map and you're like, wait, where is everyone? Do we need... If anything coming out of a pause, teams opt to play more cautiously rather than aggressively. So we'll see how DC move off of this. Unfortunate for Misery, it crashed, but it's back in the game. Secret going to swing towards mid instead. They see Lion, oh no. It's the Rapello, so he could just instantly KO him, but... Lion's back on the high ground, as is the rest of DC, and... Perhaps a bit of pause help. Fortuitous. Yeah. But, I mean, PC crash is a PC crash, so it's... Not going to lead to my... I mean, for Secret, they still get objective off of this. They're in a position where they've got five heroes, they'll get a T1 tower, so... Not, but, not a very important tower. DC get the time to farm with the Blink Dagger, so yeah. yeah. I'm not sure if he's going to have it enough after this stun. Just 75 more gold, doesn't want to sell the stick, but... Man, it's just one creep. Help him out, Miz. <laughs> Help him out, Wii. There he goes. One oh, wait, he missed the creep. Oh, he missed... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think Wii was trying to give him the whole wave, but... DC, breathe a sigh of relief. You see that lion taking farm over Alina, you know that last CS or two is the blink. Like, if you're secret watching that, you're like, he's got his blink. Now, let's let's be careful. That was as good a, as pretty much the equivalent of a blink reveal. Yeah. But similarly, Shadow Demon blink, so quad blinks on secret. Come on, puppy, you know when to join the cool kids club. He's got double raindrops. Double RDs. Why not, I guess? I mean, yeah, the, mana, the, region. mana region stacks, right? It should? Yeah, I believe so. Okay. It's a Roche, the next objective. Can DC actually take a fight around the pit? They need vision, because Secret will generally be at a vision advantage because of Batrider flying vision and a repel hero out in front and TA traps. So DC don't really have a good way to get information about Secret's positioning, aside from maybe like PL illusion scattered here and there, but Secret very desperate to try and get a kill before... Well, we'll just TP bottom, so... Perhaps a... Bit of a... Dangerous position, but Artesia is the blink away, so... I'm not too concerned. Yeah. Bottom lane, oh, good are, setup they, without... are they gonna go on bad at bottom? Yeah, it looks like they... Did initially try to, but the TP's coming in response, and me finds Misery. Ooh. We'll take him out immediately, and PL could be in trouble. Lacks an escape here, we'll get lassoed immediately. Bulba had just the mana for resolution. Once the play here, we'll get the doppelganger off, but that's not really going to help him out too much, so... Looks like DC tried to go aggressive on the lone Batrider, but Bulba had the quick support. Yep. Ooh, it's a fast Roshi spawn. Not a good time to go for... Oh, this is where he puts or down not, the trap. Not a good time to die. He's put down the trap, scout Roche, and get the DD. And this is with PL dead for 40 seconds, so... Yep. That was a. I actually, I think it was a good move by DC though. Trying to go for the Batrider kill. If they get the Batrider kill, they can, I, I think, at least threaten Roche to... A better extent. That was like an insta Roche respawn. It was like the time it came up, it was like three or four seconds and it was just boom. So perhaps karma from the pause advantage going DC's way. And so TZ immediately will swing towards this tier one tower bottom and the DD rune. Should be a free tower. Blink. Oh no, no, blink. Just a hacker slam coming out. They want envy. He's not the Aegis carrier. Misery will get turned around on. Echo Slam down, Wii is thinking about split pushing this top lane. As TZ ready to go forward, blinks in on Moo, will force him back to stop the annoying Chakram, but some of the creeps dragged off here. TZ can just tank this one up though. Not the most dangerous of split pushing here is Alina. Talk to me about items, it will just be a blink bloodstone. The blink obviously helping with the positioning and I hear that can snowball with Bloodstone, but we haven't really seen DC find too many kills as of late. Nope, still not a good way to deal with Repel, and they just have so much burst that these yeah. supports are... Uh, miseries in that land where you're never sure if you're going to be able to get that Blink Dagger. I've got the high ground with DC. Have to respect this, they're going to get Blink Lassoed on that high ground here. Move gets to lead. He did have Bloodstone, so it'll be a very fast respawn for Timbersaw. So that's mean they're not really in too much danger 
as far as the high ground's concerned for now, we'll possibly could still be if Secret decide to force a high ground push in with BKBs coming out. Things get dangerous here. One BKB on Ursa. We'll have to see if TA opts for one as well. Definitely a, at some point going to be a needed item for TA. Fighting into the PL Shaker line and not being able to rely on Repel. Yep. Oh, Counter the, the Diffusal Blade. Well, goodbye. Blink Dagger Goodbye. Dreams for good. And the only way you farm a Blink now is just winning, being involved in a few team fights where you don't die. Get four stepped in by someone else. Yeah. Do, the, do the butt slam echo. <laughs> That's what they need. Find an Invis rune or something before a fight. Vote for the best. So, looks like Secret. In good position to force a game three here. Talk about this series being one of the closer ones today and right now. Game one, I mean, neither of these games has felt all that close, but the series as a whole seems like we've got two fairly evenly matched up teams. I like the change of pace from Seeker Strap, though, yeah. where they're the ones this game always looking to fight and get kills. Oh, speaking of getting kills, resolution. Whew, maybe kept alive by another great Saxka. Hail, the deletion comes from the Laguna Blade as back gets taken out of the fight. Potential chase coming from DC here. Blink in a couple of seconds. Can they get Arteezy in time? Not gonna chase. Felt like he didn't have the follow-up. We'll blink back defensively. PL gets caught up by a disruption here, and Resolution immediately gonna doppelganger away. They can't really fight into Envy's BKB. Moo is gonna get taken out by Envy, and no buyback on either of these two. The Timbersaw not too big of a problem, but PL dead for 40 seconds here. It was a TA BKB as well, so Secret looking to perhaps tighten the noose here going for this double BKB. I think recognizing that their lineup will not scale as well into the late game as DC's. And they want to fight with the net worth still like, heavily in their favor. Yeah. They can get some pickoffs, but they're much stronger as a five-man unit. And they've also got the Aegis advantage. And you've got a defusal on PL, but he's dead. And he also doesn't have charges, so this is... Repels back online. You don't need BKB anymore. Although RTZ does have it on cooldown, but... This should just be a, a free BB Rax. They're going to blink in to try and force the issue here as Urshik gets deleted. Envy finds one. Meanwhile, Bulba finds another. TA taking damage here, but this is where the Aegis comes into play. Finger goes on cooldown now. If anything, Secret's totally okay with this. They should be able to force the Rax here. Ortiz blinks it off out of the Firefly. Well, it's his buddy Bulba's Firefly, and now we'll see Resolution being forced back with the Doppelganger. It's the Disruption Illusions coming out from Shadow Demon that's also just harassing DC and at some point Secret have to just prioritize this Rax here. It looks like Arteezy is going to make the move to go for the Melee Rax. We'll take it out. Now needs an escape plan. He's getting low here. He's running out of mana. Quickly fighting into the PL. Guardian Angel will help keep him alive. It's a PL still struggling to maintain enough defusal charges to fight. MB's got another BKB. Misery blinks in with an Echo but gets immediately taken out by the TA. DC chewing through buybacks here to try and take one last fight but they don't even get a single kill off of it. No defusal charges for resolution made that very difficult. Yeah, the Omni Knight is just <laughs> unmanageable. They can't counter the like the repel plus blinking in on a TA, on blinking in on the bad, blinking in on Ursa. They've used it on all three of them, and like someone just instantly dies. And it's also the fact you've got double BKBs. Like yeah. DC is all about the disables and magic damage. If you can't disable these heroes, you're getting no value out of your Lion or your Earthshaker pick. Timbersaw, all about dealing magic and pure damage as well, which gets blocked by BKB. So yeah, slash repel. So you use the BKBs, and after the BKBs, you still can't fight if you're DC because there's repel. Repel Refraction. was king for the first 25, and then now BKBs can yeah. just take charge, and DC, like, they they can't disable multiple heroes at once without the yeah. Blink Dagger on the Shaker, and now that, like, the, he's died and no gem on him, I don't know who even has a gem anymore, like, there's just very little uh, chance for them. Maybe they can, like, take a big fight around the next Roche, but, like, aside from that, I see, like, very little in the way of stopping from this going to a Game 3. I mean, Otizi recognizing the one, oh, so okay. the one potential way you lose a game like this is if PL gets massive. He's already picked up a Maelstrom. He's like, let's just prepare so I can deal with a PL Illusion army. Not every day you see a, a Maelstrom TA, but PL one of the few heroes that could force this item pick up. I don't think I've ever seen one. Cool pickup, though. Yep. <laughs> 
And for secret, you've taken the Meteor X now. Battle Fury or so let's see it. <laughs> no worry. And let's fight like that. The secret, they don't even have to all focus on one target. You had TA blinking on one, you had Bat blinking on another. Like, that's just how good a position they're in when they can initiate and split their firepower across multiple heroes. I mean, Ursa and TA just do so much single target damage, they don't want to stack onto the same hero. Um, Puppy, going for the finishing blow over here. Resolution. Doesn't get bashed. May get lassoed here, but pops the Manta style to confuse Bulba. Well, luckily, there was no first or second hit bash there. I believe Ursa got at least a couple of right clicks off. Bottom tower is I don't know why they didn't just lead with Lasso. Neither do I. <laughs> Lasso's like guaranteed kill right <laughs> yeah. there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it was also similar to how TA like jumped the resolution earlier while he was farming the large camp, and then Bulba blinked in after chase him after he had double uh, double gangered. Mm -hmm. But you could just start off with repel and then they're dead. He's dead. But not a big deal for them. Can we bring some pressure on this bottom lane. Sudden Aether Lens perhaps picked up by him. Yeah, very good pick up on Lena, but <laughs> it's more magic damage, right? You say that so optimistically as if it's going to be like a, oh man, great pick up. DC's, they're looking good now. <laughs> nope. No, no, no. Scepter is like not useful at all because like you can't kill people through repel. The Enrage and Refraction are still going to be able to mm -hmm. block the... Uh, majority of the damage from that. So. And Aether Lens is much better for trying to spam out the waves. You want this game to go on longer. Uh, if you're if you're DC, you don't want to lose right now, which seems very high probability. Seems blinking in aggressively. No fear for Eternal Envy. 20,000 net worth advantage, and that's going to only increase with this Range Rex pickup. See them swing towards the bottom lane or TZ on the high ground. No backdoor protection in play. and They need a smoke on DC if they want to have yeah. a chance of winning this fight. And they still got no blink dagger on Earthshaker. And times are tough for Digital Chaos. Someone's going to start this fight off. And I guess the big question is who? It's probably going to be on the side of Secret on Bulba. And that's not a position DC want to be in. They want to be the ones getting the jump. But Tower will get denied. And... It's, they gotta do something. Oh, they found Envy. And something. Where's the disruption? Is it gonna come in time? The burst damage is real and Envy. It looks like the PL illusions were perhaps forcing the Shadow Demon back and Puppy. maybe Puppy self repelled, I think. Uh, not sure. Yeah, I mean, Envy was. It looked like he thought he was just hidden in the trees there. He was waiting to for DC to push out so he could jump in, but DC either knew he was there or just happened to kind of walk upon him in the woods. Oh. And Roche back with Envy dead? Yeah, very fortuitous respawn. Can DC, DC really kill it? I think you have, you have to try I, I for try. it. Uh, PL, Lena, Timber, Roche takers, not really. Lena's pretty good. Yeah. But the damage upper wise, yeah. Otherwise, it's... if you don't take the fight, Secret are going to try yeah, to take yeah. a 5 on 5 on Roche. And then if you don't take that fight, they're going to push 5 on 5 with Aegis and Cheats. Oh, no, I, so you, you have to, I, I think they just have to attempt it. And yeah. If it goes poorly, at least you had the highest probability, I think. They scatter pings around there and yeah, the, the, the TA trap. So Ursa, don't think has BOTs, but there is still the T2 up on top or the T1 in mid. Should he choose to go there and they do and not they, have enough damage. It's one of those things where they definitely can take it if Secret don't come their way. But now they know there's no trap in there. So Secret's going to be second guessing. Hey, are they in Roach? And Secret have to come and contest this. So I like the smoke move. They're going to catch Envy again. The burst damage, not going to be there in time. I believe, nope, he's going to BKB out of the disruption and Envy. Perhaps a wasted BKB unless he can get Resolution, but with the Purge, I believe Resolution may go down. TA on the side gets Misery, and Resolution almost brings down Envy. A couple more Eclipse can be needed, but we have the Dragon Slave. Not enough. 30 HP. DC lose four. And unfortunately for DC, this time around, very Pilot Eye was good ready. idea. That was a very good idea with DC, but oh, yeah, as you mentioned, Pilot Eye with the save. It was the only play they had at that point. Like, we're not taking Roshan time. If they. Secret coming to Roche, you get wiped, so they try and catch him by surprise. That was pretty high percent. That was the highest percentage play I think they had. I think even if they kill Envy, they still lose the fight. That's how far behind they are, though, but... Mm -hmm. 
Definitely envy surviving meant resolution took a lot more damage and I still like seeing moments of brilliance like that though. Yeah. Um, it's, it was a great goal. It's promising. Like, that's that's where you like you see that and you're like, yeah, Misery is definitely the guy to captain and lead this team. That was some good decision making from him, but the current position is that Mu on the Timber getting chased down yep. by the Ursa and Go Scepters versus Defusal and Demonic yep. Purge is not gonna stick. But that's kind of the best option. He has no amount of armor is going to really save you from this, even with force active reactive. So, yeah, just cleaning up right now, and that will be the good game call. It's the repelled frontline. What do you want to call Ursa? Like.